Okay, so we got another video on this stuff. We got another video on systems of linear equations and how to solve them. Now, what we should have learned in the last video is that these systems mean two lines for us, means two lines in the same graph. What we're looking for, and again, what we're looking for here is the one point that's common to both of them. That means where they cross, because that's the only point in the world that's on both lines this one and that one. It's on both of them. It's got to work in both equations. What we learned also last time is there's really a, several ways to do this. Uh, one way we can use the substitution method. We're going to get there in the very next video. We'll start talking about it. But we can also do this by graphing. And it's, it's good to explore the graphing to really put it in your head what we're doing. So this is as straightforward as it sounds. So we're we're going to solve the systems by graphing. So let's think about it. Can you graph that line? I hope so. Can you graph that line? Sure. Find out where they cross. That's, that's literally all that we are doing. Remember, there's three cases. The most common case is they cross at one point. They intersect. The other cases would be they're parallel, which means they never intersect. No solution. Or they're the same exact line, in which case they always cross. They're one on top of each other. Infinite solutions. Most of the time, we get that one. Almost always, we get one solution. So the big idea is we're graphing. We're looking for the point where they intersect. And then, for goodness sakes, you are checking it in both equations. Because that point has to satisfy both. Make true math statements in both equations. If not, then you don't have the right intersection. We'll talk about the failings of that at the very end of the video. So anyhow, one more thing. Um, Man, I don't care how you graph this, as long as you're able to graph it. So if you're the type of person who likes solving everything for y and using slope-intercept, fine. But a lot of times, these are set up for us in standard form. That's fantastic. Uh, on the example in the last video, uh, what we did is I gave you one solve for y. That was slope-intercept. That's fantastic, too. So from our graphing, it's kind of cool we did graphing, right? Because you have two really, really efficient ways to graph. You have slope-intercept. Use the y-intercept, go up or down, go to the right, no problem. Or you have the intercept method where we find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. We have two methods because there's really two ways that we see our lines a lot of the time. This is set up perfect for intercept method. Now, I don't really care that we're going to get fractions. You'll see why at the, at the end of our problem. We're going to be checking our answer anyway, no matter what. We're never guessing at this, like, ever. So. Even though we're going to get a fraction on that when we solve for our x-intercept, that's okay. We can totally do that. If you're not okay with that, solve it for y, use slope-intercept. So let's try this. Let's graph the first line. Uh, if we graph the first line, remember the intercept method. It says find your x-intercept, find your y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we plug in y equals 0. If we're doing that, we're basically obliterating that term. So if y equals 0, we get x equals 4, that gives us an x-intercept an x of 4, 0. I don't have time to reteach you that. That's We've already gone through that. So if you're a little sloppy, uh, look up that video for intercept method. Go back and find that and watch how to do the intercept method. It's very quick. If we want to find the y-intercept, basically we're letting x equal 0. That means that we never cover up the sign, ever, ever, ever. Cover this up. By covering up, I mean we're plugging in 0. That whole term is disappearing. We get y equals 2. That gives us a y-intercept of 0, 2. That's right up there. Now, as you're going to notice, we're going to want the best graphs that we can. Because if you're trying to look for uh, the point where these two lines intersect and your graphs suck, well, then your intersection is going to really suck. And you're not going to find it. So we need really quality graphs to do this. That's one of the drawbacks. Okay, the other line. So we want to make sure we got 4, 0, got it, we got 0, 2. That's a great line. Now we're going to do the next one. So let's use the same technique. Now even though we get fractions, this technique does work. It's fine. If you don't like the fractions, sometimes you can avoid them by doing the slope-intercept. I'm not going to. I like the cover-up method. It's one of my favorites. It's really, it, it's really quick. So let's let y equals 0.
If we let y equal 0, that whole term's gone. We get 2x equals 3, no problem. Divide by 2, we get 3 halves. That's 1 and a half. Now remember, these are going to have to be some pretty good graphs. So when we're dealing with fractions, maybe you do want to use slope-intercept. Maybe you want to use a different method. <clears throat> Let's also let x equal 0. When we let x equal 0, keep in mind, we never ever cover up signs when we let x equal 0 or any other uh, variable equal 0. It's just the term that you're plugging 0 in for. So that 2x is gone, we get negative y equals 3. If you divide both sides by negative 1, y equals negative 3. We found an x-intercept of 3 halves comma 0. We already had our y coordinate of 0. Now we have an x-intercept, sorry, y-intercept, of 0, negative 3. x is 0, now y is negative 3. And if we graph that line, and we recall what we're actually doing, what we're doing here is we're trying to find the point where these lines intersect. Obviously they do. We got one line going this way, one line going this way. They're not the same slope, they're not the same line, so they're not parallel, they're not one right on top of each other. That means they're going to intersect. The point where they intersect, this point right here, that is what our solution is. So let's go ahead, let's find that point. Now we should be really good at plotting points. We should be good at finding points and telling the coordinates from that point. So our coordinates here, let's write this out. Our x coordinate looks like, let's see, that's one, two. Our y coordinate is one. So that's the point 2 comma 1. Now I want you to stop right now and listen really careful. Some people are not very good at graphing. Uh, as far as making them accurate, they just go willy-nilly and they put in lines on paper and it looks like crap. Um, but that's okay. That, that's okay, but not okay that your lines look like crap. But if you're not perfect at graphing, because I want you to, I want you to understand something. No matter what you get here, the, the better you are at graphing, the more accurate this is going to be, obviously. But Whatever you get here, you are not done. What I want you to do, make sure you do this. You take that point, what's your x coordinate and y coordinate? Get that in your head. So your x coordinate is 2, your y coordinate is 1. Your x value is 2, your y value is 1. If you plug that into this equation and to this equation, it has to make a true statement in both of them. If it doesn't, you have the wrong point. So when we've graphed our line, no matter whether you made a great graph or a, a horrible graph, and, and you, you find out where they intersect, you take your best guess at it. You go, that looks like it's 2 comma 1. Notice how we're guessing? That's not very great. That's why the methods exist, okay? So we go, that's, that looks like it's 2 comma 1. Well, let's go ahead, let's plug that in. Let's, let's verify that. So if I plug in 2 comma 1, remember, x is 2, y is 1. This would give us 2 plus 2 times 1 equals 4, and I know that's true. So I know that this point is on that line. Obviously, it's on that line, but now it works in that equation. I know I graphed my line accurately. I know that point satisfies that line. That's not enough. It's got to work in both. So do not go any further until you've checked both equations for that same point. So we go down here. Remember, x is 2, y is 1. 2 times 2, that's 4, minus 1 is 3. So it worked in both equations. That's the only time when you know that you're right. So once you've found your point graphically, you take that point, you go back to the actual algebraic linear equations and two variables that we had, plug it into both of them, and see that it still works in both of them. If it does, then you have found your solution. So this is the solution to that system of linear equations. It's kind of cool. So 2 comma 1 is our solution. Notice how it's not just one number anymore. Well, it can't be. You've got two variables. If you have two variables, you need two equations to solve it. Now we have two equations. That's cool. But that means we're not just getting one number anymore. We're getting two numbers, one for each variable. That is why the graphs work.
because you have this, this way to represent two variables at the same time. Where they cross is the point of intersection. It's also the one point that satisfies both linear equations. I hope that's making sense. We're going to do one more, but this is the idea. Graph them, look for the point, plug it into both of them, verify that you're right. I would very much recommend that you pause right now and try that. Try to graph that. If you want to solve for y, that one looks pretty easy to solve for y. Just subtract 3x. Uh, if you want to solve for y here, not so much. Maybe use the intercept method and deal with the fraction. But I'm going to give you a little bit of time. I'm going to pause for just a second let you pause the video and try that on your own. Okay, so hopefully you have. I'm going to graph it fairly quickly. Remember, we should be pretty much like professionals at graphing here. So if we graph, let's set y equals 0. We get an x-intercept of negative 2 thirds 0. Man. Looks like it's right about there, negative 2 thirds comma 0. And now we're going to let x equal 0. And we get this y-intercept of 0, negative 2. So I'm going to graph our line. Man, could I have got it different? Could I have done got the same line differently if I subtracted 3x? Well, then you'd have a y-intercept of 0, negative 2. If you subtract that, you would be going down 3, right 1. So down 3, right 1. It looks like we have the same line here. Now, you're going to notice them. I'm going to speak to it in about five minutes here, but notice how using fractions, when we have a fraction like negative two-thirds, that, that builds in some, some approximations right in the problem. So automatically, this idea of checking your point it needs to make sense to you because we're, we're kind of approximating, we're sketching our line when we're dealing, dealing with those fractions. Same thing here. So let's do y equals zero. We get negative 5, 0. Okay, we'll do that. That's not bad. And then x equals 0. Oh man, that's nasty. I don't like that one at all. So x equals 0, we get negative 4y equals negative 5. You've got to divide. If you divide a negative by a negative, you're going to get a positive. So we're going to have 5 fourths. Five fourths. Let's see. Five fourths. That's one and one fourth. One and a quarter. So that's zero comma five fourths. Zero comma one and a quarter. Looks like it's right about there. Now, I'm walking you through this because I want you to start understanding what's going to happen on your graphs. On your graphs, my point doesn't really look like it's close to much, but it's closest to... Negative 1, 1. That idea of closest to, well, I mean, this stuff's got to be exact, right? It's got to be the exact right answer. So you're naturally going to pick the point that's closest to where these lines cross. They, they obviously do intersect. We know that we have one solution. It's going to be a point. That's great. I'm glad we're seeing that. But it, our, our graphs aren't necessarily the most accurate things in the world when we're dealing with fractions. When we're Even when we're doing slope-intercept, you can deal with fractions there by having a y-intercept that's, uh, that's a fraction. So that's kind of tough. That's what necessitates our, our plugging in of the, these, this point to both equations. So we're going to go up here. We're going to make darn sure that that's right. So our x is negative 1. Our y is 1. That's... Three times negative one, that's negative three, plus one is negative two. That's fantastic. It also has to work here. Hmm. 
negative 1 minus 4, that's negative 5. Okay, that point creates a true math statement of both of those equations. That point satisfies both equations. That is the solution to that system of linear equations. And we found it by graphing. Obviously, obviously, hopefully it's obvious at this point. Where the lines cross, that point is on both lines. That point is on both lines lines. It must satisfy both equations. That's cool. And we know that it does. So that's our solution. Now we're going to talk for a minute about this. Is this fast? Not really. I mean, we got to, we got to graph two lines. We got to do it well. We have to do it accurately. Otherwise our points going to be way off. And then we're, we're sometimes kind of guessing at where that point is. And then we're having to plug it back in. That's pretty slow. Now, I want you to imagine this. Imagine that I wasn't wrong. Imagine my graph is perfectly accurate. And imagine that, uh, that, that I, I say, oh, it's closest to negative 1, 1. D do you have to have an intersection that is on like a grid mark of negative 1, 1? Could you have an intersection that is actually fractions? Yes. Could, these li could two other lines intersect at like 9 sixteenths comma negative 4 fifteenths. Yeah, they could. That's nasty, but it could happen. That's one of the problems with, with, with doing the, or solving these systems of linear equations with graphing is that you're always naturally going to want to make these whole numbers. You're going to want to make them integers and whole numbers. That's a problem if we're trying to find fractions because I, I can almost guarantee you're not going to guess the right fraction. That's hard to do. So we're going to have to develop some better methods. I prefaced it in the very first lesson on this last, last video when I said, hey, this is going to lead to substitution method. That's a better method. That absolves us of all this guesswork and, 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 and finding and having to plug number. You're still going to plug it in and check. But having to do that uh, and guessing where the intersection is, that's, that's not the best way to go. So this lesson is, is designed for one thing. It's designed to get in your head what we're actually doing. Systems of linear equations mean two lines for us. We have our two lines. The solution is the one point where they intersect. If they don't intersect, there's no solution. If they're the same line, there's infinite solutions. We're looking for the one point where they intersect. The one point where they intersect, that's the one point that has the same x-coordinate and the same y-coordinate on both lines. That means that you can plug in the same x and the same y's, and it's got to work in both these equations. That's really cool. We can do it by graphing, but there are more effective ways. Now, the last thing I want to talk about. Almost everybody's asked to do this. <clears throat> what about, what about, can you find out, can you find whether a point, remember a point, it's not just one value, it's a point. Whether a point is a solution to a system of linear equations or not without graphing. So for instance, if I give you this, let's think through it. Let, let's think about what this, this actually is. It, firstly, is it, um, is it a system? So how many, how many lines would this make? And if you have two equations, both with two variables and each variable to a power one, you're making two lines. Are they going to cross? Well, we'd have to graph that to figure that out, or at least solve it for y to figure that out, or do some sort of other manipulation to figure out whether they're going to intersect or not. That's what future, future methods are, are for. So could we graph that? Yeah, absolutely. Is it nice? Not necessarily nice, but you could graph it. Could you graph that one? Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe you'll get a fraction here, but not a, not a horrible one. Um, so yeah, we could totally graph that. And we could find a point, we could plug the point into both equations and find the solution. Sometimes though we're asked, hey, is this a solution? And so we're going to have to take a point like, how about 5, 3? Is 5, 3 a solution? We're going to explore that for just a minute. This is pretty quick. Well, what that means, that question, is 5, 3 a solution? means that 5, 3 must be the point of intersection. 5, 3 must be the one point that's common to both lines. What that means is basically, in basic terms, plug in the 5, plug in the 3 to both of them, and it darn well better work. If it doesn't, then 5, 3 is not a solution to the system. Let me say that again. 
If this point does not satisfy both equations, it's not the solution. Even if it satisfies one and not the other, there's a lot of points that satisfy this purple line that aren't on the black line. Okay, that, that, there's a lot of points there. We're looking for the one point that satisfies both. That one point must create a true statement in both equations. So if our x is 5 and our y is 3, that looks right. I mean, 10 minus 3 is 7. I know that this point is on that line. That's 11, though. 11 does not equal 1. This does not create a true statement there. This is what I'm talking about. This point for sure is on that line, absolutely. But is it on that line? No, and here's the whole reason why we're doing this. What we're actually doing is finding the point that's on both of them because the intersection is the one point that satisfies both equations. The one point that says, hey, you have the same x coordinate and the same y coordinate. That's where you're crossing. There's no other point out here besides that one where you have the same exact x and the same y for both lines. That's what I'm trying to find here. So this would have to work on both of them. So this is not a solution. Let's try one more. So if we try 3, negative 1, x would be 3, okay. Minus negative 1. Remember, we can always use parentheses, especially when we plug in negative numbers. That way we don't get confused. Minus, minus, it's really bad. So plug in 3 for x. Plug in negative 1 for y. I know this is 6 plus 1. Hey, that works. That's 7. I know that that point is on that line, 100%. If this point is also on this line, then that's a point that's on both lines at the same time. Only intersection points are points which are on both lines both lines at the same time. And that's what we're looking for. That's the solution, is the intersection point. Cool. So x would be 3. Let's see, that's, uh, that's 3 plus negative 2, or 3 minus 2, same thing. That's also true. Hey, that's a solution. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That point satisfies both lines. That means that point is on both lines. Only points of intersection are points which are on both lines. That's exactly what we're finding here. That's exactly what we're checking for here. I hope that makes sense. Next time we're gonna start the substitution method. We're gonna go through that and I'll, I'll show you um, that it works all the time. That's really cool. By the way, just so you know where we're going with this, the next few videos we talk about substitution, then after that we talk about elimination. Why the two? Well, for the same reason, there's two methods of graphing. Graphing, we had slope-intercept, that was pretty cool. We also had intercept method, that's pretty cool. Why do we have both? Well, we had both because we have two different forms of lines. So whatever form we're presented with, like that one, intercept method, works pretty nice. If we had solved for y, slope-intercept method, that works nice too. That's what we're going to be dealing with here as well. So we're going to have two methods that work awesome, depending on what you're given. Substitution method works for some of them really nice if you solve for a variable already. Elimination method works if you're not. So I'm actually going to make it even easier than that. If you would graph one of the lines with slope intercept, you'll use substitution. If you would graph the lines with intercept method, you'll use elimination. That's how those things line up. So we'll talk about that in the next few videos. We'll, we'll digest everything that, that we just talked about. I hope it makes sense to you. Uh, I'll catch you for the next one when we talk about substitution.